Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch... Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we continue our reflection during this month of May on our Blessed Mother Mary. As we are now doing, we wish to deepen our knowledge of her mystery, especially as outlined by the Church Fathers, those uh, great scholars and uh, bishops, priests who lived in the early centuries of Christianity, who understood the mystery of Mary and are in fact the first to teach uh, with authority, the authority coming from the fact that they were the successors of the apostles, the authority to uh, teach the doctrine and to explain it well for those who come after them. We can also now reflect before tackling one point in particular on the fact that for them at the very beginning of Christianity it wasn't that easy to clearly understand the mystery also because they had to face many challenges coming from errors spread and the heresies for them for example to speak about the Immaculate Conception as we do now wasn't that easy but despite all this there are some very important insights saying that Our Lady was without sin. She was never touched by sin. One of these fathers already underlying Our Lady sinlessness was Saint Ephraim the Syrian. I wish today to reflect with Saint Ephraim on some particular truths in relation to Our Lady. But Saint Ephraim, in singing the mystery of Mary, was also touching upon this truth. Mary is the ark that hosted the presence of God. That ark could not be now stained by any, 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 anything. She is pure. This is one of his reference, but uh, <clears throat> in his beautiful poetry, we have also references to Our Lady's divine maternity, her virginity, especially in giving birth to Jesus Christ, and also her role as mediatrix, the mediation of Mary. So this to say that it is thanks to the fathers that we have received well and uh, clearly this teaching on these several aspects concerning the mystery of Mary. Let us now point out one of these teachings by Saint Ephraim the Syrian. We are in the 4th century, 373. Ephraim in Hebrew means fruitful. And in fact, out of his uh, mind and the heart as a poet, he uh, drew a lot of insights describing the mystery of Mary, praising our Lady, from his liturgical poet's heart have flowed the richest encomiums, praises in honor of the Mother of God in the early church. We are in the Middle East, in Syria, 
And uh, St. Ephraim is a daughter of the church who was made such by Pope Benedict the 15th. There is a beautiful expression of this Pope in declaring St. Ephraim doctor of the Church. The Pope writes, this harp of the Holy Spirit, St. Ephraim is defined the harp of the Holy Spirit, never sings sweeter songs than when he has set his strings to sing the praises of Mary. Let us listen to him now, to one of his uh, poem, poetry, more precisely, in honor of the Virgin Mother of God. He writes thus, Awake, O my harp, thy chords in praise of Mary the Virgin. Lift up thy voice and sing the generation utterly marvelous of this virgin, David's daughter, who hath brought forth life to the world. The love with admiration wanders at her, whilst the curious searcher is suffused with shame and his ear is stopped up. Lest he should dare to pry into the mother who brought forth in virginity in violet. Virginity in violet. It is already a reference, clear reference in the Middle East about a lady's perpetual virginity before a childbirth, during her childbirth, and after the childbirth. He continues, in Mary's womb became an infant, he who from eternity is equal to the Father. He gave us part in his own greatness and himself made acquisition of our weakness. Mortal was he made along with us that by infusing into us his life, we might die no more. Mary is the garden upon which descended from the Father the rain of benedictions. From that rain, she herself sprinkled the face of Adam, where upon the returned, he returned to life and arose from the sepulchre, he who had been buried by his foes in hell. Lo, a virgin is become a mother, preserving virginity with its seals unbroken. Again, a very good reference to Our Lady's perpetual virginity. The seal of her virginity is unbroken. She is made God's mother and is at the same time a servant and the work of his wisdom. Last verse. The virgin who gave birth to the only begotten has nurtured God and man, has become mother of the hidden little one who of the father was born perfect and is made an infant in her womb. There are many other verses and the poetry is written in honor of our Blessed Mother, singing Our Lady as the mother, the mother at the Annunciation, and also praising her role in, uh, at the moment of the, the birth of our Lord, and especially Our Lady's sinlessness that, uh, that we can tra translate also as the Immaculate uh, uh, Conception of our Blessed Mother. So with this other author, we understand uh, the importance of the mystery of Mary as sung by them. One final note, just on this verse we read, one of these verses, 
Our Lady sprinkled herself with the rain coming from heaven, the rain of benedictions. She is the earth upon which the rain fell from heaven. The rain is the grace. The rain is the logos who came down and uh, came to the earth, came to bless the earth, the very first virgin on earth, Our Lady's womb, Our Lady's life. But Our Lady, in reply to that action of the rain blessing her, sprinkled the face of Adam. This is the mediation of Our Lady. The grace she received is already given to Adam in order to save Adam, to participate to him <coughs> that grace of which she is like a vase containing all of it. Through her, the grace is passed on. The grace is now given to Adam, to each one of us, for our salvation. Our Lady's mediation. You see how many truths contained in this uh, understanding, in these poems, in St. Ephraim, the harp of the Holy Spirit. We pray to him today to give us a bit of his knowledge of Our Lady, but especially his love to sing ourselves the praise of the Mother of God. And we pray to Our Lady to sprinkle us as well with the grace uh, of which she is the mediatrix. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit,